Hi everyone and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be making some in the hoop pot holders or trivets. You could use them for whatever you like. I love pot holders if you can't tell by now. I've done several videos on them, but I found this design by Designs by Juju and it is so cute. She's got several different patterns. There's this diamond pattern, there's diagonal patterns, there's square patterns. I will link her, uh, the file in the description below the video. But let's get started and let's make some hot pads. Here are the two that I completed. Now I made these at 85% on size. I resized it on my machine because I used my eight by 13 Mighty Hoop, which didn't take the full size. This time I'm gonna use my eight by 13 hoop that came with my Rakoma and I'll be able to do the full size. So this one's going to be slightly bigger. So this is what the finished product looks like. You can see it's finished on both sides. The quilting's only on the top and the bottom has an envelope style back. So I've printed out the directions. We're gonna follow those along. And I've, according to the directions, I went ahead and cut out all of my materials. Now you're going to need a piece of Insulbrite batting, which is a batting that's made especially for hot pads. It has this kind of reflective, almost a crunchy feel to it. You can get this at most any fabric store, but I will link it in the description below. So we're gonna need that. You're also going to need your fabrics that are going to be on the back, and those are cut to seven by nine. I folded both of mine in half. You're going to need your fabric that's going to be on the front. That's the main fabric. Those are cut to eight by eight. You're going to need two of your piece A's, which are two by eight, and that's an AB piece, and two of your pieces of CD, which are two by nine and a half. It does help to go ahead and cut those out to size. So let's go over to the hoop and get this party started. So we're gonna stitch step number one, which is our placement and directional steps. So we'll go ahead and do step one. Now you're going to take your fabric and you're going to place it right over your placement stitch. You want to make sure that it's covering all the lines. I'm going to use a little 505 adhesive. You can tape it down if you prefer. I'm just going to place that right over, make sure everything's covered. We're going to go back to the machine. Step number two, tack down. Now the next step is the quilting. So we are on step number three. Now you want to trim as close to your stitches as comfortable. It doesn't have to be right next to it. You're going to be covering this up anyway. It's just to get rid of some bulk. All right, so we've done our quilting. Next thing we're gonna do is take our pieces A and B and you're going to line them up. So you're gonna put it right side down. It's kind of hard to tell on this, but this does have a right side and a wrong side. So you're gonna put it right side down, up against letter A, edge. You wanna make sure it goes from edge to edge. And you're just going to tape that down. I like to tape it right on the ends. And in the middle. And then we're gonna do the same for B. We're gonna put it right side down, right up against the B side. We're gonna tape that down. So the next step is going to be step number four and it's gonna stitch right down here. And then we're gonna flip it up and it's gonna tack that down. That's gonna be number five. And number six is going to be this side. We're gonna fold that up and number seven will be tacking that down. So let's pop back over to the machine.
All right, so it just tacked that down. So I'm gonna undo my tape on just this A side. And I'm gonna carefully push this up, make sure that it's nice and flat. If you wanna give it a little roll with a sewing roller, you can. I'm just going to finger press it, making sure that it's out of the way. All right, we're gonna let it tack that down. And we're on step number one, two, three, four, five. Step number six is going to do this side. All right, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to undo our tape. We're going to pull this up and tape it back down. And you're going to trim these little tails. Doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing with our C and D pieces. We're gonna put right side down, line it up with the C stitched edge. I'm gonna tape that down. and the D. We're gonna do the same thing we did before. We're gonna lift this up and fold it back. Now it's going to do the same thing on this side. We're on step number 10. All right, same thing. Hold this back.
All right, now it's gonna do a top stitch right around the top. All right, now it's going to stitch the spot for your ribbon. So in this corner right here, there is a little spot. That's where your ribbon's going to go. You're going to take whatever you're going to use, and you don't. You can skip this step if you don't want a hanger on it. You're going to fold it in half, just like so, and you're going to place the fold side in and tape it down. And then I suggest taping this out here just to keep this down. Make sure you're not your tape isn't in the border right there. I also suggest that you have scissors or something that you can make sure that this doesn't get caught under the presser foot. All right, so it's gonna tack that ribbon down. We're gonna flip this over. You're going to take your insel bright and you can either use the spray or you can tape it on the spray. You want to cover the back and it doesn't really matter which side is up or down. You want to make sure that that stays in place. I might add a little bit of tape just for extra measure. All right, so we've got that stitched down. Now we're going to trim up the insel bright on the back. All right, so we've trimmed this down. We're gonna turn this over. And now we're going to add our backing. So you're gonna take one of your fabrics. These are cut to seven by nine, folded in half on the nine inch side. So you're going to take that and place it so the raw edges meet with the raw edge here and tape it down. You want to make sure this stays in place. Then you're going to take your other piece, not folded in half, and we're going to line it up with the raw edge here and the raw edge down there. Making sure you should have a pretty good overlap. We want to tape that into place. Take it back over to the machine. Great, so we are almost done. We can remove any tape, turn it over, make sure everything looks good, and you can remove it from the frame. All right, now the first thing you want to do is trim this batting away from the other pieces of fabric. That's just going to get rid of some bulk. All right, so once you've trimmed that batting back, it should look something like this. Now, this is the easiest with a rotary cutter and ruler, in my opinion, but if you don't have one, you can absolutely just use scissors. You want to cut within a quarter of an inch outside of your stitch lines all the way around. So I've got a quilting ruler here. I'm just going to stick the quarter inch line right there on my stitch line and trim. all the way around. It doesn't have to be exact, but you're just trying to get rid of some of that bulk in these seams. All 
All right, once you have that done, I would take your scissors and trim the corners. Just be careful you don't cut into your stitches. Right, now you're going to reach inside here and flip it right side out. Really focus on getting those corners flipped out. And flip the other half. And then use a chopstick or a bone folder or whatever you have to reach inside there and really work those corners out. All right, now you wanna take it over to your iron and give it a nice press so that you don't see any of the back fabric on the front. So make sure those corners are rolled out. So all that's left is to close this up. I'm going to use some Heat and Bond Ultra. This is just like the stuff we use for applique, except for it's in the form of a tape. The Ultra is the one you want, that's the permanent one. I've torn off a piece that is approximately the size of our opening, and I'm just going to slide it right under that little lip so that you can't see it. The tape has a rough side and a paper side. We're putting the rough side down. And we're just going to give it a little bit of heat. A little bit of pressure. All right, we're gonna let that cool down for a second. All right, once, once this is cooled down, you can go ahead and peel the paper side of the tape off. You wanna make sure that you let it cool first, otherwise you'll pull the adhesive off. And that reveals an adhesive that will be activated once we apply heat again, so we're gonna Close it back up, make sure everything's nice and smooth, and give it another press. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I think this Designs by Juju pot holder is so much fun. It's so easy to make and such a practical gift idea. Everybody needs a pot holder or a trivet or a hot pad, whatever you want to use it for. And there's so many possibilities. You could use holiday fabric and make them themed. You could match your kitchen, whatever you like. On a side note, please forgive my voice throughout this video. I have been fighting a cold and I put it off as long as I could, hoping to be better by the time I had to make this video. Thanks so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to click that bell so that you're notified every time there's a new video. See ya. Bye-bye.